The Asus NUC Pro? It's just another mini PC, right? No, you don't understand. This is the Intel mini PC. If you like Intel NUCs, this is what they've become. Asus took over the Intel business unit. What? What? Yes, it's true. Let's discuss. So Intel, as part of their reorganization and their business strategy and everything that they've had going on the last few years, with Meteor Lake, which is what is going to be in this, Intel's sort of moving away from making their own mini PCs. And there are some in the know that look specifically for Intel mini PCs because they have unique features in the market. Things like HDMI ports supporting HDMI CEC, which is a kind of commanded control protocol that's built into HDMI. Basically, when you turn this on, your, your computer can take control of your HDMI TV. It could turn it on, maybe do other functions. And so having those functions in a mini PC are things people will literally buy the Intel NUX just for that reason. Now, Intel also had their NUX for enthusiasts and their NUX for, for pros. Yeah, there were Xeon-based mini PCs. I still have and use a ninth generation Intel NUC that is based on a Xeon with 32 gigs of error correcting DDR4 memory and it has two expansion slots bifurcation like it's it's a kind of knowledge and experience that has been forgotten in 2024 because it's a better experience than a lot of modern mini PCs and I can already tell you the Asus NUC 14RVH is going to be one of those experiences the Intel experience that you know and crave now from Asus with the blue box. See, it's blue. It's how you know. It's Asus is sort of wanting everyone to know that, hey, uh, we took over the Intel NUC. Like people that only buy Intel NUCs. Hey, it's us. We, Asus, we, we buy it. It's, it's the same thing you're used to, except it's from Asus now instead of Intel. Uh, it turns out Asus is probably making those for Intel all along. I mean, sort of kind of, but not really, but also sort of kind of. Well, that looks exactly like the 12th gen. Exactly identical, including with the module on the bottom so you can have modular connectivity. So this one has dual built-in Thunderbolt, which is amazing. And the front USB Type-C, that's 20 gigabit and supports charging. They have a way to toollessly release to the inside? Yeah, just turn the lock to unlock, slide, and then boom, the bottom pops off. So internally it looks like we got an M key NVMe as well as a 2280 standard NVMe plus regular DDR5 memory that's replaceable. You also still have room for a two and a half inch SATA hard drive. You can just slide that right in. Even a 15 millimeter, so you could put in a four terabyte mechanical hard drive. Although, just get a four terabyte SATA drive and thank me later. The cable for that is already pre-installed, so there's nothing to lose. That is glorious. And that's really all the user serviceable parts that there are. Now that M key NVMe could also be used for the expansion card. So like if you wanted to add an RS-232 port or something like that, these do support RS-232. They are literally designed for use in like hospitality and other types of business class scenarios that I often love to talk about. This also has the same Visa mounting mechanism, the two screws on the bottom here, for being able to mount to a Visa mount or something like that. And it's got a nice peel on the top. I found that appealing. Also in the box, you got your NUC safety information and your regulatory information. Your Visa mounting bracket is still included, which is fabulous to see. Now this is a Core Ultra 7 unit, and it does include Intel vPro. We've got a very small FSP group power supply, which it doesn't weigh a lot at all. And this is output 19 volts, 6.32 amps, 120 watts. Get your screw pack for your mounting screws and everything else. Your cable clip, which will hold your power supply cable in place mechanically. It's very nice to see. And that's it. That's the full bundle. Let's do a quick tour of the ports. At the rear, we've got dual Thunderbolt and dual HDMI. So, you know, run two or three display out. You've got your USB 10 gigabit and your USB 2.0 port and a 2.5 gig Intel NIC. On the front, we've got two 10 gig ports and one 20 gig Type-C that does charging, as I mentioned before. We also have a Kensington lock port on the side. Whoa, this thing packs quite a wallop. We'll get to that in a minute. Those quality of life features I was talking about, it's got a built-in dongle-less Bluetooth receiver. What, is, what does that mean exactly? It means that once you pair your Bluetooth mouse and keyboard with this thing, on startup you get an extra screen in Windows where it says, hey, pair your devices now. 
and you've got a minute or two before you can, you know, proceed, but you can use that screen to pair your Bluetooth mouse and your keyboard, and then it's paired with a hardware receiver that lives inside the machine, basically. Now, this is a Core Ultra 7 165H that does have Intel's AI accelerator. That means if you want to run Python or OpenVINO or any of those kinds of things, Intel has a special version that will leverage its hardware for acceleration. This also has an NPU, so whenever Microsoft gets around to doing Copilot Plus and all the other stuff for Windows, you'll be able to use the NPU in this thing because this is basically a laptop CPU, but in a small form factor machine. Now ASUS gives you a three-year warranty, so this really is designed for 24-7 usage. The bundled memory, DDR5-5600, is actually running at 5600, although the timings are a little loose and it is 2T command rate, but hey, what are you going to do? It's also only 16 gigabytes of DDR5. I think 32 is probably the minimum in 2024, although this would make a good information worker appliance. Same with the SSD, 512 gigabytes. A little on the small side, but this is kind of a demo unit for me. When you're ordering one of these, be sure you get 32 gigabytes of memory and a terabyte of storage as kind of the minimum. This thing does support up to 96 gigabytes of memory, so DDR5-5600. I was happy to see that working with the crucial 96 gigabyte kit. This has got built-in Wi-Fi 6E AX211. That is an Intel-based controller and also includes Bluetooth 5.3. And the 2.5 gig NIC is based around the i226. That's a 225LM on vPro SKUs or 225V on non-vPro SKUs. The two Thunderbolt 4 ports do support DisplayPort 2.1. Well, it's technically DisplayPort 1.4 with DisplayStream compression support, but you can run DisplayStream compression support with the iGPU on this. So if you wanted to run 4K 120 or 144, you can. It is officially supported with the XE graphics supported in this thing. So again, the product strategy with the NUC 14 Pro, 14th generation, is that you get the AI acceleration plus ARC graphics, and that's going to power anything that you want to do with AI. But it's really... Intel One API and OpenVINO and Intel's full software team standing behind this product, letting you do those kinds of things. So if you want to run the Windows subsystem for Linux on this, for example, you can use Intel's accelerated version of Python and get better Python performance on this. There's no DGPU or anything like that, but for an information worker type appliance, or if you have something that you want to run Python on, this is not a bad choice because of Intel's Python support for everything else. In terms of Meteor Lake, overall performance. Our Geekbench numbers for both single and multi-core scores break down basically exactly where you'd expect. From the wall we see this thing drawing on the order of about 100 watts which is great because you know you get that charge port on the front. You could charge your phone from this thing's USB interface. You got a little bit of power headroom and that would also support you know a mechanical hard drive if you wanted to go nuts but really you know a SATA drive would work well. If you were going to use this for a home appliance because this comes from an Intel pedigree, this has a Linux support that is basically second to none. So if you wanted to use this as a, a little mini server or something that would run, you know, an audio server or a Plex media server or something like that, because this is the Intel platform and because of what Asus has done and the HDMI interface and everything else, you could throw a two or four terabyte uh, inexpensive SATA SSD in there use this for those media service things and basically other than having internal redundancy or some sort of internal you know backup mechanism this would make a pretty fine low power ultra quiet machine to be able to do that this thing would disappear completely behind a television and it's actually probably overkill for that if you're doing comparison shopping and you're looking at pricing <laughs> you're going to look at this and say wait a minute 16 gigs of memory and 512 gigs of storage at this price point it seems like there are better deals in the market and for raw parts and performance in the market, there probably is a better deal. But, three-year warranty, Intel pedigree, and Intel vPro. For business customers that are looking for manageability of endpoints, if it doesn't have vPro, they're just not going to buy it. And so vPro here, nice. Also, the Asus BIOS is a nice professional BIOS. It's very, very similar, basically identical, to the high-end, full-featured BIOSes that we saw uh, from like the, uh, the previous generation NUC, like the ninth gen that I was mentioning before. And so any kind of customization that you want to do in terms of HDMI CEC behavior or other platform specific features, the BIOS has those features, which is very nice to see. The BIOS also supports iSCSI boot. That means you can boot from the network and have your block storage device be somewhere else. 
This really is designed for 24-7 usage and usage in a business scenario. Also supports display persistence. So if you're using these for medical imaging and you've got a colicky setup that requires medical imaging displays maintain persistence, like the machine thinks it's always connected to a display even when it's not through a KVM, hint, hint, you can actually configure that in the BIOS. So it'll work without having to have special extra hardware. Display persistence. It's also useful for digital signage because sometimes you have uh, some software that's not really caught up with the times. I does support Intel VMD, so if you wanted to use the 2242 and the 2280 somehow, you, you could, but I don't know that I would recommend that. There are other BIOS features that are there, but harder to use on this platform. Oh, this is also available in a tall or a short variety. In the tall variety, you can add a SATA hard drive or the uh, optional module I was mentioning before, but the shorter variety is more compact and doesn't support those things because it's just a physically smaller enclosure. And the single fan on this is whisper quiet. It's basically inaudible even when it's running under full load, which is fantastic. See what I did there? It's fantastic. So all in all, Asus is doing a pretty good job carrying Intel's torch for them for this product. If you want the next generation Intel NUC and you're looking around saying it's not from Intel, no, it's not. Now it's from Asus. And it's more of the same, but now also with some Asus special sauce. So I think this is an improvement over where Intel was with their NUC line because Asus really hasn't changed the formula and the places that they have made changes are very much for the better, very much quality of life improvements. So that's very nice to see. I'm Wendell, this has been a quick look at the Asus 14th generation NUC Pro. This thing is gonna have a permanent place on my shelf for testing Meteor Lake and everything else. I've got a couple of comparison Meteor Lake systems, but this system posts the best behavior and the best performance out of all of them, which is impressive. Good job, Asus. If you have any testing that you want me to do or you, you have a killer application you want to test the NPU with, but there's not, a, there's not a lot of applications out there for that NPU just yet, let me know. We'll take it for a spin. I'm Wendell, this is Level 1. I'm signing out. You can find me in the Level 1 forums.